Today I've prepared a sermon titled, Peace Given from Christ. Before I start the sermon, look what I have. A Coca-Cola. Oh. Is the pastor trying to drink Coke while he is preaching? <laughs> Instead of water? I can't because I might burp, right? <laughs> Today I brought this soda with me because I'm going to show you something. Uh oh. Now, what a mess that will happen in this pulpit. <laughs> I'm shaking the coke. Uh oh. You all know what's going to happen, right? What is happening inside this can right now? You all know what's happening, right? Yes. In this can, there is carbon acid, right? And is getting pressure. Uh -huh. Getting pressure in this can. And when I open this can, uh oh. <laughs> Sal is like, look at me, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, no, no, no. <laughs> when I open this can, it'll explode because of the pressure, right? And much like the can I'm shaking, our lives, uh, our lives can feel like a pressure cooker at times, like this can. Mm, is it? You know, comparing life in a Coca-Cola can is not right, but imagine, right? Every day we are confronted with the things that cause us, what do we call it? Stress. Right? <laughs> Pressure from our work, family relationships, maybe for our career, right? maybe because of our health, and hundreds of other factors play into our lives. Yes. Not to mention the things that we see happening across the globe and around the corner on the evening news and read about on the internet. These pressures build up in our lives and can lead to serious issues. People try many outlets to release this pressure, including exercise, participating in extreme sports, some people alcohol, and for some even drugs. Oftentimes, these outlets only provide a temporary relief from the pressures of life, and people have to try more drastic measures in order to cope, or they end up with more serious issues. Depression, anxiety, and self-hate are all results of trying to relieve the constant pressures of life, overwhelming us and taking control of our emotions. Don't you wish there was a way to release the pressure before things get out of hand and lead to an explosion like this Coke? Well, people say, I searched YouTube, and you know, you shake it, but there is a way how you can open the can without an explosion, you know? I'm not gonna try because I'm not brave enough. <laughs> but the YouTube tells that you tap up here. And then, I don't know, the carbon, the acid comes down and it becomes normal. Let's try. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll try it at home. I, I couldn't practice at home either, too, because of joy, but yes. <laughs> I don't want our parsonage to get filled up with ants, so. <laughs> Anyways, yes, the good news is there is a way. There is a way to get lead to an explosion of our stresses and everything. We see in the story of the birth of Christ, yes. That the angels that appeared to the shepherds announced the fundamental purpose for Jesus being sent to earth. Jesus' goal was to bring peace. Let's see from our main scripture. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Amen. From the time of the first sin by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, mankind has been in a state of unrest. Man has lived in a constant struggle to survive, having to work the ground to produce fruit or hunt and kill in order to eat. Things turned instantly from a life of peace to a life of or turmoil. All because of one decision not to follow the direction of God. And things have only been getting worse as the years and centuries have gone on. Countless wars have been fought, nations rising and falling on the blood of men, women, and children. Today, society is arguing over what lives matter or whose opinion or viewpoint is right or better than another. It seems that we are never able to turn off the noise that constantly surrounds us. But the peace that we are looking for was born in the humblest of conditions more than 2,000 years ago. The angels announced that because of the birth of the Messiah in Bethlehem, God would be glorified and that peace would be on the earth to those with whom God was pleased. This is not just a comforting word from the angels. The peace that Christ brings is real and alive. As much today as it was as the host sang to the shepherds. If we look in history, the birth of Christ was surrounded by a period of unheard of peace and stability in the biblical world. Leading up to the time of Jesus, many nations had attacked, fought, and battled for control of the nation of Israel. We see this throughout the Old Testament as the Israelites were taken into captivity multiple times, only to return home after several generations. But at the time of Jesus' birth, and Romans had conquered most of the known world, and this brought peace to most of the world particularly the nation of Israel. No one was fighting for control because no one could challenge the Romans' power. It was not until after the death of Jesus that the world began to experience unrest again. If we look through the Bible, there are so many references to peace in connection with God or Jesus. Often with Jesus speaking peace over a situation or a person. And one of the most memorable accounts of Jesus bringing peace came in the midst of a great storm. In Mark chapter 4 verse 39, he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still, then the wine then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. The disciples are afraid for their lives here. And these are experienced fishermen, right? Afraid of a storm while out on their boats. And they are so afraid that they wake up Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus was sleeping through the whole event of this. And ask Jesus if Jesus cares that they are about to perish. With three simple words, what did Jesus say? Peace, be still. Quiet, be still. Jesus calms the wind and the waves and silences the storms. Imagine the defining silence that is going on around the disciples at this point. Hmm. No birds, 
no clouds, no sounds other than the gentle lapping of water against the hull of the boat. Can you picture the looks on their faces at Jesus? Presumably lies back down to sleep again. This is the peace that Jesus can bring into our lives. Amen. Jesus has power over every circumstance and situation that we find ourselves in. Nothing is beyond the scope of Jesus' ability. Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 23. In NLT version, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. This psalm was written by King David at one of the worst points in his life. Following the events with Bathsheba and being confronted with his sin by one of his advisors, David is in a state of great torture. He knows that he has fallen out of the wall of God because of his actions. David knows that there will be consequences for those actions. We see in Psalm 22 that David is asking God why God has abandoned him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? David is feeling desperate for the presence of God in his life and he is begging for it, in fact, and agonizing as Psalm chapter 22 reads, the next Psalm of David could not be more peaceful. Right from the beginning, we see the peace that David feels because he knows that God is his shepherd. He writes that God leads him to green pastures and puts him next to peaceful waters. We also see that no matter the darkness of a situation, David does not fear because God is always with him. He believes that. Oh, for a peace like that, take a moment and ponder that thought, everyone. Huh. Think about the valley of darkness in your life today or in the past. Do you fear it or do you have a peace because you know God is leading you through it? Protecting and guiding you. Why not turn it over to God today? and enjoy the peace that God has made available. The work of Christ is to bring peace into the lives of those that follow God. And we read in John chapter 14 that Jesus speaks about the coming of the Holy Spirit to those that believe in Him. Verse 16 and 17 says, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him because He abides you in you, and He will be in you. And verse 26 and 27 says, But the advocate... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Amen? Yes. In the original language, the word that Jesus uses for advocate means... Comfort, counselor, and encourage. This is what Jesus is promising to us that believes in Him. The gift that Jesus is leaving us is peace of mind and heart until Jesus returns again. We have nothing to fear if we place our trust in God. David did not fear the future even when he had made a mistake and had a mess on his hands. 
Jesus did not fear in the middle of the sea with the storm around him because Jesus knew that power of God. No matter what happens in the world today, whoever wins the election, huh, the wars that are going on around the world, or the crisis that is happening at home, God knows and is in control of each of these situations. What do we have to fear? Hmm. The birth of Christ and the celebration of it during this holiday season should ultimately bring a peace that passes all understandings to our hearts and our lives. Christ is referred the Prince of Peace. Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus in your life today? Let's pray. Dear God, Lord Jesus, we ask you to give us all around peace in our mind, body, soul, and spirit. We want you to heal and remove everything that is causing stress, grief, and sorrow in our lives. Please guide our path through life and make our enemies be at peace with us. And let your peace reign in our family, at our place of work, businesses, and everything we lay our hands on, Lord. Let your angels of peace go ahead of us when we go out and stay by our side when we return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.